Okay, moving on to the timeline. So we have project development and then construction and then operations. Now project development has been going on for eight years. Construction is proposed to take seven years. And let's say operations is 25 years. In this case, for the simplified model, we're going to assume construction is three years, so a lot quicker. And we're going to explore 30 years for operations because that's what it actually is for the third runway. Okay, so we're in the project development phase. That's where we are currently. Construction hasn't started. It hasn't been approved. And so it's our job to make sure how do we make this work for the sources of debt, for the sources of equity, and for the users of the runway. We're not going to look at other stakeholders, such as climate groups lobbying this, etc. We're just looking at this from a financial standpoint. Okay, now let's talk through the process by which we're going to analyze this. So we're going to start with construction and look at the uses of capital. So 10 billion of construction costs plus interest during construction plus financing fees. And by the way, we're not looking at the interest during construction and financing fees. So here's where we're adding a simplification. And then secondly, we're getting into the sources of capital, so debt and equity. Then we're getting into operations calculations. And so the third calculation will be revenue, looking at the aero, price and volume, and non-aero, which we won't break down, will be given to us as an input. Fourthly, OPEX and CAPEX. And again, we'll use simple assumptions, so no major life cycle CAPEX, but we'll have an ongoing CAPEX. Fifthly, we'll look at principal repayment of debt and fixed repayment style versus annuity. Then we'll get into interest for debt. And the simplification here is we'll assume an all-in rate rather than a base rate plus a margin. And then we'll get into tax, doing a simple tax calculation. So the simplification here is we're not doing tax depreciation calculations, we're not doing tax loss calculations, and we aren't paying tax on a quarterly basis. We're just assuming it's on an annual basis. And then we'll get into operations, cash flows, and metrics. So looking at CFADs, cash flow available for debt service, and CFAE, cash flow available for equity. So doing a simple structure for the cash flow waterfall. And then getting into the metrics. So the DSCR, the debt service coverage ratio, which basically looks at how many times can CFADs, cash flow available for debt service, pay that period's worth of interest plus principal. Then looking at a slightly more advanced one, the loan life coverage ratio. So if we discounted the CFADs to today divided by the debt balance. So how many times can the discounted CFADs, the net present value of CFADs, pay the debt balance? Then getting into the equity IRR, so the returns to equity holders. And finally, the project IRR. And this looks at the returns to both debt and equity holders. So the easiest way to think about it is as if there was no debt and it's the returns regardless of the capital structure. So regardless of the mix of financing. Okay, and then we're getting into negotiations and optimization. So basically everyone's favorite part of the deal. We're looking at this through the eyes of three major stakeholders. So debt from a maximum gearing perspective, so the most amount of debt that they're prepared to put in, and a minimum debt service coverage ratio that should be maintained throughout the project. Secondly, through equity, and we'll look at it through a minimum IRR, so the sort of returns that they're looking to achieve. And then through the Civil Aviation Authority, which represents consumers. So is this acceptable to consumers? Are consumers prepared to pay the £25 or the £30 or whatever the landing fee needs to be for this to work? And in order to do that, we're going to use a scenario manager. And basically, we're going to look at five different cases. So looking at changing from a fixed style of repayment to an annuity style repayment for debt and how that affects things. Then what happens if we have a longer concession? So an extra five years of revenues. What does that do to the returns and to keeping the debt service coverage ratio down for lenders? Thirdly, we'll get into a longer debt tenor. So we'll give the project an extra five years to repay the debt. So what does that do to the DSCR and what does it do to the equity IRR? Fourthly, we'll look at increased gearing. So what happens if we can actually go up to 80% of CapEx rather than 70%. And we'll look at all changes occurring simultaneously.